Philippians chapter 3, and we're going to begin reading in verse 8. Philippians chapter 3, in verse 8, Paul says, Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss, for the, for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dumb, yeah. that I may win Christ. Mm. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable unto his death. If, I by, if by any means I might attain the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may have apprehended that for which I also am apprehended of Jesus Christ. <coughs> Brethren, I count myself not to have apprehended, but this thing I do, forgetting those things reaching, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching for those unto, unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark of, and prize of the, call, the high calling of God in Jesus Christ. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if in anything ye ought to be otherwise mind, minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereunto we have already attained, let us walk in the same rule, let us mind the same thing. Amen. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for all your goodness and watch care. This morning, our, our simple prayer is this, is that you would come down and meet with us, that you fill this place with your presence, Lord, that you cause us to uh, feast completely on you. God, we pray tonight here for the lost, that you'd save them according to your mercy and grace, we pray it. Amen. Amen. Now, we'll be preaching uh, this morning on the strengths of the race. Now, the Bible says here, Paul writing to the church at Philippi, and that was a group of saved folks, uh, that you are in a race. And we, we'll see what Paul says about it, and he's not saying you're running it so that you can win salvation, but you're running it because you belong unto Christ. Now, the race that is not ran very well today because of a misunderstanding of the doctrines of grace. In, in that, uh, if you take grace and make it a situation where you have no responsibility to serve the Almighty, it's no longer grace. Right. And, and, and so we find then that apparently Paul saw this as a possibility at Philippi, and he began to clarify some things with those people. And then, so back in verse 8, he says, Yea, doubtless, or without a doubt, without question, and I count all things but lost. Now, there is not one of us that has lost everything for the cause of Christ here. Right. Yeah. But, we could, but we should be able to count it that way. Yes. See, when we begin to count things, if we're not real careful, because counting in and of itself is a numeric thing, right? One, two, three, four. We'll begin to count things way too much. Yeah. We'll look at our career, we'll look at our home, we'll look at our automobiles, and we begin to count things that are really pretty insignificant. And, and so counting is important, and you think this morning, if what, what you would lose, what have you given for the, count of, for the cause of Christ? And when it really comes down to it, probably not a whole lot. If you, you know, you think about the day that we spend here, and we do spend the majority of the day here on the Lord's Day, but you know what? That's what you're supposed to do. Amen. It is. It belongs to Him. Right. It's a time of worship. And together with God's people outside the confines of this ungodly world, you know what? The count of His laws. You ever lost a job? because of what you believe, counting is lost. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's unimportant. Uh, 
you know, and, and even the days that you have. You know, I think about so much time that I have wasted. Mm. And then I think again, <clears throat> you know, about what times I've spent with Christ. And some people would say that was foolish. You know, I quit a job deliberately one time because they said, no, you can't go preach that meeting. And I, I wasn't being brassy. And, I, you know, what I said was, well, uh, I'll show you that I will. And, and, and you know what? That's nothing but loss. You know, when you think of time and eternity, that really means nothing. When you're out here, what you did on the mountain of Right. Only thing that will that will last is the things given and done unto Christ. <clears throat> so Paul says that uh, that's how he looked at things. That that was just things that were nothing. Yet doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ. So he says, you you compare what you have to knowing the Lord Jesus Christ. And, 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 and if knowing him is all important, what will grow out of that, and I think that's what Paul was alluding to, serving him becomes all important. Doing what he would have you to do, when he tells you to do it, and how he tells you to do it, that becomes all important when you think, you know what? What I have don't mean anything but a compile yeah. of manure, and so what I'm going to do is serve unto Christ. And when we get down to that, then the Lord will begin to bless uh, abundantly and great because we are looking at what's important. So the first thing I want you to do real carefully this morning is your relationship with Christ. Not just the fact if you're saved, what's your relationship with him? You know, something me and Donna have... Uh, uh, <laughs> Have had, I guess, to be careful about, uh, and Diane Jr. will remember this. Uh, we've been married about two weeks, and Jessica, my oldest niece, came and lived with us a month. Y'all remember that? And she had one outfit that my sister uh, brought with her, and we washed it every day until we could get her a, a, a few things together. We've had kids in our home ever since then. And that's a good thing, I guess. You know, it, it, it's fine, but. You know, what's important, if I'm going to count things, one day, possibly, <laughs> we'll be there alone. And, and see, if you, if you get overwhelmed, see, I need to still count that as important. Mm -hmm. Donna's first. Right. And, and uh, we find a lot of times, if you, if you're, it depends on how you're counting things. So do you count your relationship with Christ above all things, or do you count your wife? Your children? What do you count on your career? And, and so we see as Paul is writing this, he came to the point, he says, I want you to see this is paramount in my life. This is the base, and it should be in <coughs> yours as well. Yet doubtless I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them but dung, that I may win Christ. Now, a lot of people don't like that, that nomenclature there, but listen, what he says, I'm glad I did it, that I might win Christ. And he didn't say because I won Christ, yeah. he said that I may win Christ. Amen. In other words, things get better when you drop this world behind. And listen, we are taught from the very beginning, get what you can get. And you know, a lot of people say, well, that's just the rich. No, um, I literally grew up with nothing. And I think it's worse so worse on those people than people with a little something. Mm -hmm. Because it just ingrained in you. And so I don't know what Paul's parentage was. I don't know what his situation was. Uh, but, but best I understand, he was a, a Jew among Jews. But he kept that all as nothing. Verse 9. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that, but that which is through faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. 
So the first thing when you're looking at your relationship with Christ, is it by you or by faith? See, that's the danger of Armenian doctrine. When you begin to count your faith, it's really about you and not about him. Right. And, and so that's why we need to count it and see what we and see what manner of faith it really is. Just is it all about you or is it all about Christ? And Paul was writing to save folks and recommending this evaluation for the redeemed. And so we, as the Lord's people, the saved people, we need to do it too. Count what's there and be very sure it's what you think it is. Verse 10, that I may know him. Yeah. You know, uh, this is how it ought to be. You should know him deeper all Amen. the time. Amen. Anybody study math in high school? Uh, I did. And, you know, it starts very simple, counting, right? And then the last class I had, brother I ever went in math, I had college algebra two, and I left there with a baby and said, "Blessed be the name of the Lord." <laughs> right? You know, <laughs> because you know, uh, uh, this wasn't my thing. But you know, with with math, I had to start somewhere. You don't yeah, come yeah. even understanding how to count, right? And bit by bit, bit, and that's how your your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. ought to be, it grows over time. Yeah. And it's useful. You know, uh, I had one math class in college called Dosage Calculations. And it was all related to nursing. And you know what? That made sense to me. And I, I literally made 100 in the class. I never, I never missed one problem. You know why? Because it was akin to me. I understood the importance of it. Yeah. And I was able to use it. That should be what is likened to Christ. Yes. And know him and know him and know him some more. Yeah. And yeah. that's what Paul was writing to the church. Glory to God. It wasn't just the fact that he was in uh, in a in a situation that he didn't know Christ. He wanted to know him more. Amen. And he wanted to know more about him. And he wanted to understand who he was. And he says that I may know him. I'm running this race that I may know him. And the power of his resurrection. Yes. I think this is very understood, a very unique statement. And certainly, if the Lord uh, does not return in my lifetime, one day I'll be resurrected bodily, even like my spirit was resurrected many years ago, yeah. and I'll be resurrected bodily. Bodily. But have you ever thought about that time they give Paul up for dead? Yeah. Yeah. He'd been stoned and yeah. threw outside the city. Right. They were standing around him, probably wondering where they are going to bury him. He got up. Yeah. Said so he went back into the That's city. right. <laughs> right? Yeah. And he preached a little bit more. See, was he resurrected? Possibility, isn't it? Mm -hmm. A lot of people in the Bible was resurrected. Three we know by the direct hands of Christ, but listen, that's just the three that we know about. Yeah. Uh, in fact, the Bible says concerning the ministry of Christ, the whole book couldn't contain it. There, there, there's no book that contain, contain the ministry of Christ. And, and, and so we find then that uh, who knows what might have happened, but what he wanted to understand was a relationship so, uh, so unique with Christ, so tight with Christ, that he was willing to die for it. Yeah. How about you? Not die for the word of God. You know, we may we may face that. I don't know. But die for your relationship for Christ. Mm. Remember Moses? He, had, uh, he was very near the end of his life. And he said, Lord, I just want to see you. Mm -hmm. and he says, you know, man can see me and live. And you know what? That was okay with Moses. Yeah. See, we need to get down to, he, he, he was okay with dying. In exchange for seeing Christ. But he said, no, I ain't going to let's do it because he had work for him to do. <laughs> yeah. And he said, but I, I'll let you see my hind parts. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, let, I'll let you. And you know what? Uh, Moses was satisfied with that. See, we want the big boom, don't we? Just bowled over a huge ministry. Thousands of people. Billy Graham stuff. 
when the world is here. Really, all we want is the person of Christ. Yeah, you're right. You know, that's so insignificant to the world, is it not? But it should, should it not be all in all to us? Just You're so the right, person of Christ? Yes. And, and then be satisfied with it. Yeah, glory to God. We, we don't have satisfaction in the day that we live. We want more and more and more. And, and not for the Christ, we want it for ourselves. We want, we want people backed up, begging to come into the building. Listen, you know what that's about? That's about you. Right. It's not the Christ. You're satisfied that you may know him. That's what, that's what Paul said, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. You know what fellowship means? It means you're there together. Yeah. You're experiencing the same things. You want the fellowship of his sufferings? Well, I believe in knowing like you ought to know him, you will. You ever lost friends? Ever you have family? You, you know, you say, you know, hey mom, how you doing? What can I do for you? But there's really there's really not much there. I mean, just be honest, right? You know what that is sometimes with family and it's okay. It's because you've took the, you remember what, what he said about Mary there at the, at the uh, supper? Mary had chosen that good part. Yeah. Just sitting at Jesus' feet and it yes, will sir. not be taken from her. Right. See, she was in the fellowship of his suffering, was she not? And, and, and if we're going to really know Christ, that's going to have to be our willingness <coughs> And not just our willingness, but when the time comes to it. And when we think of suffering, we think of how uh, Polycarp, as, uh, as Brother Kenny mentioned, and, the, and being burned at the stake and being whipped horribly. You know what? Suffering may just be you waiting. We live in a very, very impatient world, do we not? Mm -hmm. I remember last night, Don and the kids and went out to... Uh, Almstead for Sarah and Miranda's birthday, and I stayed home and tended to Joey, and I wasn't feeling that well, really. And um, I wanted something to eat, so I went in the kitchen. And you know what my criterion was? Not what it tastes like, not what it looks like, is how quick I can get it, because we're in an instantaneous generation. Mm -hmm. Patience, the Bible says, is a virtue. Now, if I, you know, I ended up with a bowl of cold cereal. <laughs> yeah, uh, but if I was patient, put a little bit more effort into it, there were all kinds of stuff to cook in a house. But I got what I, what I put into it. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And, and so we find then, as, as Lord's people, we don't live in an instantaneous generation. We don't live in bum, 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 bum. Not in spiritual things. In, in fleshly things, we can have what we want to that quick. But in spiritual things, it takes time. Yeah. And that's why he measures us by faith, is it takes time. Yeah. And then he says, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. Now, being made conformable means that, that it's, it's pliable and that you can be forced un, unto the same death. Now, are you ready to die for your faith? That's an evaluation that each of us need to look at to be in the perfect will of God and willing to go with it. <laughs> Verse 11, if by any means I might attain the resurrection of the dead. Now, again, it look, and I'm going to point out specifically why it's not that, when this is all a great comparison, but it will begin to look like he's saying, if you don't do this, you're lost. If you don't make it, if you don't run and cross the line, you're lost. But remember, he's liking this. Uh, uh, I think it's in uh, 
Galatians, he has a very similar uh, relate. He, he relates it in almost the exact same way because these were these were nations, uh, these were cities that understood Greek things, and they were all about physical fitness. And so he uh, he um, he used that as an example. So in verse twelve, not as though as, as I had already attained, <coughs> were either already perfect. But I follow after it if they, but I follow after if that I may apprehend for the, for which also I am apprehended of Christ. And so at the end of verse 12, he says, I'm running it like I'm going to get it. Yeah. But Christ has already got it. Amen. <laughs> right? Yes. That's exactly what he's saying. And, and but, you know, we look around today, and we do it just the opposite. And, well, Christ has already done it. I don't have to do nothing. Right? That, that's the modern-day church. And, and people, don't, people don't like to run anymore. Yeah. Now, I am not a runner to any stretch of the imagination. Uh, now I blame my ass myself. I finally got a reason, you know. We always look for reasons in the modern day, right? But, I guarantee you this, if somebody was after me, I'd be running, right? Kind of about self-preservation, is it not? But running as unto Christ. If Christ came in this building this morning, would we run unto him? I hope that I would. I think I would be, I would be marveled at first, but then I'd want to run into his feet and kiss him like Mary did. See, we... I'll, I'll say this, you're running in some direction. Uh, mm -hmm. You are. You're running in some direction. The question is where? In which direction are you going? Mm -hmm. What are you running toward? And you know, in modern day, I have to say this, what are you running away from? <laughs> you know, uh, the call of God is something that I've seen most young men run from, not run to. <clears throat> and so we find then that Paul says it is like a race. If you want to do well, you think about it as being in a race. Notice what he says in verse 13. Brethren, saved folks, redeemed at Philippi. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Forgetting the things which are behind and reaching forth unto the things that are before. And you know, and I've heard this and heard this, and I have to even be careful unto myself now that I'm in my 50s, not thinking, hey, listen, back in the early 2000s, it was a lot better. And you know what? Spiritually, sometimes I think it was. Uh, man, there was meetings to go to every month. There wasn't one month back then that we didn't travel outside of the state to go preach somewhere, and it would be a great meeting. And sometimes I wouldn't be preaching. It'd just be a great meeting. I'd get all the youngins together, and Donovan would take off. But don't look back. Yeah. You know, my children are grown now. Those days are far back. Bible says, just go. you know, that was a good time. It wasn't wicked, it wasn't mean, but you know what I'd like to see? Getting in that old van, not only with my, my children, but my grandchildren, and going to a meeting, even if it was right here in the local church, yeah. and see a meeting like I've never seen before. Keep going, we're not done. Right. You, you, know, what, you know what the thing is about, well, it's the last time. Uh, we're just gonna hang on, you know, uh, Put it on the rope and hang on. Yeah. Oh no. Paul says here you look forward. Right. You keep pressing toward the yes. mark. You keep you keep doing everything like you've always been doing it, and not only that, you do it better. Amen. You, you, you put more into it. Yes. Than you have previously. Amen. And, and so then we, as the Lord's people, certainly should try unto Christ just like this. Yeah. And we will be well blessed for it. Uh, verse 15 let us therefore as many as be perfect that's not sinless perfection I hate to disappoint the holiness people <laughs> uh, but that means complete y'all remember the song complete in thee mm. complete in thee oh blessed thought 
If you're saved, you're complete. Mm -hmm. So what are you doing with it? That's right. What 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 is your ministry about? That's right. And every one of us has one. You don't have to be a man with a preaching ministry to right. have a ministry. Ministry is doing things about the Lord. Yeah. Simply as bacon, simple as baking a pot of cornbread. If you do it as under Christ. Yes. And, and, and so whatever your ministry is, you're equipped to do it because you're complete in the person of Christ. Let, uh, uh, let us therefore as many as be perfect, be thus minded. To, to run this as a race. Think about this as getting the job done. Think about this about running. And if anything be, and if anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal the same unto you. So the ones that are not like that, apparently that's going to be revealed to the church. And you know how you pick them out? Their interest in church, their attendance, yep. their mission zeal. You know what? You get excited about missions. Man, this little door of opportunity looks like it might be open and down in Wheatley County or Henry County. Yeah. Wherever we're going. Man, that excites me. Amen, brother. Yes, what about it does. you? Is it water off a duck's back or does it excite you? Yeah. The two little people. Do you know what the Macedonian call is about? Come over here and help us. Amen. That's what these people are saying to us. Amen. It should excite us. It yeah. should thrill us. Amen. And you know what? If nothing ever amounts out of, of nothing, shame on us if we don't. Amen, brother. You are right. Shame Glory on you. Glory to God. And, and, and then so we find that Paul says, listen, this is how you should be. You should be, uh, you, you should be that this, this is the main thing. Yes. Never, nevertheless, wherefore to we have all, nevertheless, Whereto we have already attained. He says, yes, we have made it. Let us walk by the same rule yeah. and let us mind the same thing. Now, uh, that's not mind like, you, like you're thinking about it. You know, if you mind something, ladies, if you got something on the stove and you don't want it to stick, <coughs> you mind it, right? Go by, take a look, take a sniff, take a stir, and you mind it. Mm -hmm. That's how your ministry ought to be. You're right. Mind it. Watch it. Look at it. Work with it. Do it. Yeah. Because otherwise it's going to burn. <laughs> right? And, and you're not going to get the finished product that you want. And so Paul's saying, not that you're running this out for salvation, but act like you are. Yeah. <laughs> right? And so we find then, this is exactly what he says. Now, if you will, turn with me over to the book of Galatians. And we'll see how many tools of the trade you really have. Galatians chapter 5, beginning in verse 18. Galatians 5 and verse 18. <clears throat> and if you know your Bible, you know that they were teaching baptismal regeneration at this church or these churches. And Paul was correcting them for it. Now, anytime you have heresy... That's just, that's just the service. There's more problems elsewhere. But so as he's talking to them about where they've erred, he begins with this in uh, verse 18. But if ye be led of the Spirit, you're not under the law. Now, in your King James Bible, that will be a capital spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. Right. And if you're led by Him. But then the flip side, what if you're not? What if you're not being led? See, that's one of my biggest uh, griefs with mission boards. You're led by them. They tell you where to go, when to go, and what to go. Right? So it is the possibility of being led by others. And then y'all remember the old saying, Mama called and Daddy sent. Right? 
And, 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 and it, it works on the very same thing. So are we being led of Christ or are we been leading ourselves? Uh, are we in the will of God or have we convinced ourselves we're in the will of God? What, what is really your leadership this morning? Where are you at? Are you being led of the Spirit? Are you being led of self? Are you following uh, contritely in the foots of Jesus? Are you doing your own thing? That, that is a must for God's people that we be, be led entirely by the law. I mean, excuse me, by the Spirit or we're under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest or obvious or evident, which are these, adultery. Now, that's my understanding. Probably nobody here has committed adultery, but you've got it in your mind. Uh, that's a work of the flesh. That, that ought not to be. That's running around on your wife, on your husband. And it ought not to be. But what about running around on Jesus? <laughs> Have you ever thought about that? Yeah. Getting a, bit, a little bit involved in the world? Instead of listening on the music of the Lord Jesus Christ, you're listening on the music of this world, you know what that is? That's adultery. You're running around on him. People don't like to hear that, do they? No, sir. Adultery. Not being faithful unto Christ. Now, how are we going to have the tools of the trade when he's not our all in all? You know, that's what the Bible calls that he is our all in all. He, it's all about him. Everything is centered around Christ. And most of us today don't sit in that position, but rather, it's all about us. And so he, he, he begins this with adultery, fornication. That's a sexual relationship outside the marriage bond. And again, maybe we've never done it in the flesh. Maybe you have, but many of us have done it uh, at least in our mind, and then the Bible says you're guilty if you've done that. Uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry. Now, you can't serve God and have idols in your life. Whatever they may be, however insignificant, you can't have them. Now, see, an idol is something that's protected and often hidden. Uh, you remember... Uh, when uh, Israel was fleeing with his wives and children, that uh, Rachel had that stuff hid. Remember, she, she had it hid real good and she made a lie about it. Listen, that, 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 that's no surprise. Most of us lie about our, our, our idols, do we not? Oh, that's just something I have. Oh, well, if the Lord called me to do it, you know, I would do it. Would you? I mean, really, if he called you to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, would you do it? If he says you're done here, would you move along? See, that, that when, it's one thing to say it, but quite another thing to live it and to follow through with what God has given us to do. And, and so we find that he, uh, he makes it very clear that we are to focus on him. Idolatry, witchcraft, now, witchcraft, and, and, and there is all the hocus pocus, that's a very real thing. But you know, when you really study out witchcraft, it's making other people think something and get them to do something from it. And, and, and excuse me, sisters, ladies are, ladies are uh, I, I, mm, the best I've ever seen. Be very kind. You know what? You need to let the husband lead that home. And if it blows up in his face, it's on him and not you. You, you know why people, you know how women dress the way they do when they're being provocative to emulate things from a man? That's witchcraft. It's manipulating them, is it not? They don't want to be among God's people. Right. And, and so we find that he says these are the things that hinder your spiritual tools. It hinders your spiritual work. It hinders what you are doing. If you have these things in your life, you're not going to be effective in the cause of Christ. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred. You know, I've heard people say, oh, I hate him. 
I've heard people that claim to be the person of, in the person of Christ in our own churches in with our own people say that they hate other people. You know what? I put a big question mark. The very, thing, the very least thing you do is love them, pray that the Lord might save them. Right. right. Hate is not to be named among God's people. Right. And you know what? If you have that deep down hate for someone or for something, you're not going to be affected in Christ. Right. Now, you may be affected in other things, but you won't be affected in Christ. And, and so he also warns us about that as well. Then he says, uh, drunkenness, Envians, murders, drunkenness, revilings, and the such like, which I tell you before, as I've also told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, a lot of people don't, don't like this little qualification, but listen, if that's your baseline, and if that's how you operate all the time, there's no evidence of salvation. See, that's what your little ABC and your little Romans road gets you, is a bunch of people that are about like this, and the, and the Bible says very clearly, they'll inherit nothing. You know what? I put a big question mark on people who just don't crave the things of Christ. I really do. You know, I used to look at that as, an, as, a, as, a, as a zeal, and it is to some point, to some point, but it ought to be the baseline. You see what I'm saying? That, that ought to be marked by every Bible-believing, every born-again, saved Christian there is, that this is all that it's about. Because is it not? When it's all said and done, it doesn't matter what you owned or what you had, certainly not. What, what really matters then, the only thing that matters is what we've done unto Christ. So he tells you what is going to hinder you and then he says, this is what you need. These are the tools of the trade. This is what you need when you're in the race. This is what you need to be effective in the race. <coughs> and he begins, but the fruit of the Spirit, Holy, S, Ho, Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, capital S, is love. Mm. Man, that's a, that's, a, <laughs> that's a scary thought, ain't it? You love people as you should. I mean, really. Do you love? Don't listen to people. I try to love people. But do you love being in church? Do you love the Lord's Day? Do you love the Bible? Do you love your brothers and sisters in Christ? What do you love? Do you love the world? Do you love the things that are of this world? Mm -hmm. Love is a fruit of the Spirit. Now, uh, you know, I've always heard this adage, uh, hate the sinner, hate the sin, love the sinner. Well, the only thing I've got to offer for them is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. right. What do you love? Uh, what thrills your heart? What makes you tick? So he said you must have love in your life, well-directed love, love that goes unto Christ. Love is a must, and you need to measure your, yourself in your love because you know what I'm seeing is a lot of anger and hate among God's people. And one little thing don't go their way, they're mad. And the only way they know to express themselves is in anger. You watch those people. Love. How's your depth of love this morning? Do you love these people around you? You better. And, and, and so a lot of times the reason that we're no more effective than we are, that the race gets so tumultuousome and we quit and, and we fall flat on our face is because we lack love and our love is not directed at the right things. We must love. So he says, joy. What about you? You know, uh, 
I get excited when we sing. Man, the joy just comes up over my heart. I enjoy it. Joy. You know what? I'm going to see a lot of joy in God's people in the morning. Do you? I mean, really, do you? How many people do you see smiling? How many people do you see glad to be in the Lord's house? How many people do you see joyful? And, you know, when you really see a joyful person, it just spills out of them. It ain't no fake. It, it ain't, it, you, you just know it's sincere. That is joy. You know why people quit coming to the Lord's house? Is there's no joy. Yeah. They have no personal joy, and they see no joy among God's people. You know, if you have no joy, and listen, we think about joy on the Lord's day with God's people, but you know when Satan steals my joy is when I'm by myself. He begins to remind me of my past. He reminds me of how small and simple my ministry has been. He reminds me how little, what, how small our group is. And man, whoop, he steals it. And you know why? That's the stuff he focuses on and not the stuff that he focuses on. The Bible says this, where two or three are gathered that together in my name, there I will be in the midst. <laughs> and that's joy. And so don't let him steal your joy because if you don't, your race is going to be a race most miserable and you won't get very far with it and you'll fall flat on your face. Peace. <laughs> what a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful fruit of the Spirit. My favorite fruit of the Spirit, the one that I need every day is the peace that passes all understanding. The peace that says, listen, when we get uh, President Biden, peace be still. When the, this nation is over, peace be still. When this church is locked up by the government, peace be still. Do you have peace? See, because if you don't, fear will paralyze you. Fear will keep you from doing anything. Yeah. And fear always comes when your peace is gone. How peaceful are you of eternity? Got a lot of young people in the church. I guess this is our youngest couple now. What if they, you know, they go down that big hill and get out to their house? You know, where 79 was built up. It used to not be that way. Uh, what if they went off in that big hole there? Never see them again. Or right, see them out here. You have peace for that? See, we think with this, don't we? We think, man. Uh, Sarah Elizabeth, she, she's 20. I don't know how you are, I won't say it. Uh, and she, she's got another good 50, 60 years left on her. Well, we don't know that. We, we really don't, do we? Do you have peace to, to get your mind around that your death may be a lot closer than you think it is? Do you have peace enough if the Lord God says go? You'll go. Your your immediate response is, I can't speak Spanish. I don't know Russian. Or will you go? Right. See, that's the real measure of your peace, is it not? Yeah. And, and so we find that he says, if you're going to run the race, and you're going to be effective, you have to believe me. When I say run harder, all you do is run harder. The peace must be there. Long Suffering. That is probably the least fruit of the Spirit I see. I used to say it was peace, but now I say this fruit of the Spirit is a more rare one because long suffering is almost a thing of the past. Uh, wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and He will strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, wait on the Lord. Right? But do we do it? Because see, it's long. And you know, in other churches I've been, I do believe because they were looking for it in the imminent return of Christ. But I've heard it preached so much at times that that's all you're supposed to do is wait on the Lord. But but you know, we're up to be up about the Father's business. Long suffering. 
most thing you've ever wanted and how long did you have to wait? Now it's still not running, but y'all know I have a 48 Chevy there at the house just waiting for about $15,000 to throw in it, right? You know how long I've been in that? Since I was 11. And I got it two years ago and it's still sitting under my, my building. But that was 39 years waiting. 39 years. And we want everything like this, don't we? You know, you know how much, how long you may have to wait to, to see them children say 60, 50, 50, 60, 70 years, and it may be after you're gone. You know, you know how, may it, uh, how long it may be before you get the church that you think is perfect to pastor? It may be 50, 60, 70 years. Are you patient enough? Are you long suffering? I dare say spiritually, that is the least fruit I see. It's like a dried persimmon on this peach tree out here. It's just not there anymore. Long suffering. Not only is it long, <laughs> it's suffering. There's problems. There's heartaches. There's difficulties. Long suffering. When you're in the race, Remember that this must be there. Gentleness. I don't see that among God's people anymore. People are not even gentle with their children anymore. Gentleness. Being kind to others. Being kind to children. Remember what the Lord Jesus said? Suffer, uh, suffer the little children to come unto me. He, he wanted to be around them. He wanted that ministry. And be kind to people. You know, people who are mean all the time, there are people most miserable and they don't get very far with the Lord. Now, I won't say his name because uh, his daughter's a dear friend to me, but there was a man back home. He was a very contrary man. Just almost mean, but not quite. And uh, he started coming to the little church where we grew up. And, and not to be ugly, the, the other two churches at Carlisle were done with him. <laughs> and... <laughs> And so he started coming dark. And you know what I found with him? Just let him go over and bluster and be patient with him. But you know what I also found with my, with my patience? I never heard a man get a hold of God like he did. I mean, he could pray like no other man I've known since. He had a gift. We just all had to be patient and see it, did we not? See, we, we need to be more like that. We, we need to be individuals that, 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 that are loving to other people, that, that, that want to buoy them up instead of bring them down. Gentleness, goodness, faith. Now, notice the two things it doesn't say. It does not say faithful, now, although I think you should be. Faithful is just being consistent. Faith means believing. Do you believe God is able to raise from the dead? I believe He is. Do you believe that uh, He could cause people to walk on the water even today? I believe He can. Uh, uh, if <laughs> Garner used to say, I would swing out, out across the lake of fire on a dry corn stalk because I know I'm in His hands. I hope I have that kind of faith. Faith. He said it. And you know what? I believe that's the missing molecule today. It's just, well, what, well it was even the Lord's day, was it not? Mm. He said if you just had the faith that there's a grain of mustard seed. Yeah. Oh, you know, say, say to that mountain, get the hints, and it would be moved. Yeah. You know, I always think about Adam and Sarah going down to see her folks. You go very close to Lookout Mountain, down 40 there. There's all these places. It's called the the crash lane, so the trucks can go into the side of the mountain if they get to go in too fast. And uh, be a quicker trip if Lookout Mountain wasn't there, would it? Be now removed. See, we we don't have faith like that. And the reason why is our our mind gets thinking, well, can't you? It can't do this, it can't do that. Limestone's really heavy and that mountain's been there for centuries. Don't think 
just the, the you know what will ruin your faith? Trying to reason it out. Yeah. Trying to put our understanding to it. That 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 will destroy our faith. And and so we find then he says you need this one. Meekness. Again, very rare quality today. Temperance or one who controls. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ or belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lust. They've gotten the flesh out of the way. They've subdued it. They've got it down. Mm -hmm. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. Now to walk in the Spirit or to walk in the Holy Ghost, you have to know them. Walk in the Spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, this is the thing with walking, on the spirit, walking in the Spirit. When He stops, you have to too. Yeah. And for me, I'm a little hyperactive and I, I get a little fast sometimes. Stopping to me is harder than moving. That makes sense. Yeah. But if he stops, you stop. If he goes, you go. Mm -hmm. Remember the pillar in the cloud? That's how that's how they followed, wasn't it? And when it stopped, they set up camp. And when it started moving, they threw things together and they went in right behind it. Yeah. That's following faithfully. Yeah, exactly. What about you? Do you have the tools of the trade? Are you miserable or are you happy? Are you in the perfect will of God or are you in the permissive will of God? Do you love him like you ought to?